How very lovely to see you. Thank you for turning up. Um, hello to Joe, Joe Sheldrake from uh, from Norfolk. Yep. Hi there. Hi. You turned down a, a real offer of a date, didn't you? I did. Yes. Yeah. Um, from um, from Prince Philip. That's right. Yes, we did. We were going down to our local town to see the Queen open the council. And uh, it was a really freezing cold day, so we were standing next to the local hotel. I turned to my friend to actually say to her, we'll pop in for a quick drink. And behind me was Prince Philip. And he tapped me on the shoulder and just said, would you mind if I joined you? Mine's a gin and tonic. <laughs> well, that's a very good story. Well done to you. And he was Thank behind you. you at the time. And now I have to tell you that behind you today, actually in seat 17, is, is Rowan Best. So it's not Prince Philip. Best of luck to you. Uh, Rowan is up there in, in 17. Um, and you, uh, although you're, from, you're in London now, you're originally from Tasmania. Yeah, from Tasmania, Australia. Yeah. Tasmania, Australia, mate. Tasmania, Australia, mate. And uh, you've got crocodiles there, haven't they? They've got crocodiles in Australia, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so tell me about your, uh, your fishing trip. Yeah, I went fishing in the Northern Territory of Australia. Got in a... Uh, no, I got... Wait a minute. What was it called? Kakadu National Park. There you go. <laughs> so you were fishing in Kakadu. Yeah. Yeah, OK. And I got a, a five-metre boat, went fishing my, by myself in a crocodile-infested uh, river, uh, fishing for barramundi, and uh, managed to fall in. Oh, my goodness me. So you, you had to swim to shore? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've swum faster in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to you. Thanks, Philip. And uh, also uh, in, in seat 22, we've, uh, we've Joanne Duncan. Uh, hi, Joanne. Hi. Hi, from Surrey. Yes. And, uh, and it must be very unnerving when you, when you get married uh, to hear during the service laughter coming from the con congregation, yeah? Yes, there well, was. Why, why were they laughing? Well, I turned round and could hear all this tittering going on behind and shoulders going up and down and they're pointing to my husband to be. And I glanced back and he had H-E on one foot and L-P on the other saying help. <laughs> Who had done that? Uh, I found out later it was the best man. I'd offered to clean his shoes the night before. And, and written help it. on the bottom. Yeah. That's fantastic. Good luck to you. Good luck to everyone. Those are our 49ers. If you are ready, let's play Winning Lines. Here's your first question. Very best of luck. 28's putting her glasses on. Right, she's short sorted now. But here we go. If TV's flower pot men took Little Weed and the children of the Spice Girls to the cinema, how many tickets would need to be bought? Right then. There's your first question. If TV's flower pot men took Little Weed and the children of the Spice Girls to the cinema, how many tickets would need to be bought? Bizarre question. We come up with them, that's for sure. Right, there you go. First question of the evening. Let's see who answered. If you decided that question was for you, then we'll let you pick. A fair smattering, but not that many. Ten. Ten people out of our 49ers, leaving 39 to uh, fight another day. Uh, I wonder how many of you got it right. The answer we wanted was five. Uh, five was the answer. Bill and Ben, Flower Pot Men. There's Brooklyn and Phoenix Chi, uh, the Spice Girls' children. Uh, two Flower Pot Men, one Little Weed. Uh, all that basically adds up to five. Trust me, it does. Five was the answer we wanted. If you gave us five, you will go blue. If you didn't write on this first question, and I hate doing this, it's a red light. Oh, no. Nine, 28 and seven. Uh, unfortunately, this is, a, this is a nightmare to do. You've come all this way, but we have to say thank you very much indeed for playing, but we do lose you from the game. And away they go. At least the pressure's off, anyway. Uh, what we need to do now, out of the uh, seven people remaining who are lit blue, is to find out who's the fastest, who's going to give you your number, hopefully, to get you here in a couple of weeks' time. And third place, it's Roberta Carney. In second place, it's Lorna Gibson. And in first place at 9.1 seconds, Gail Rushby. <laughs> well done. You're the first person through. And congratulations. How do you feel? Nervous. Oh, no, don't be. No, you can't be nervous. You must be, you must be used to being under pressure at speed. You're a snowboarder, aren't you? Yeah, I do like to snowboard. How often do you go? Um, we've been a couple of times this year. Been about five times altogether. Where do, where do you like to go? Um, we've been to France, been to Spain. And if you were to do very well this evening, we could send you around. You could snowboard around the world. Good, yeah. Sound good? Yeah, Excellent. Definitely. All right, well, uh, congratulations. First person through. We'll see you in round Thank two. You. How many degrees are there in a semicircle? That's a faster one. I can hear you stabbing away here. I have a feeling that quite a few people have played that. How many degrees are there in a semicircle? 
And your time is up. Right then. So if you liked that question and decided to play it, thinking that you were in with a chance, then we'll let you think. OK. Uh, the answer we wanted, uh, we've got 22 people who uh, had a crack at this. Uh, the answer we wanted was, uh, was 180. If you gave us 180, we will light you blue. Anything other than 180, and it's going to be red. Oh, no. We lose uh, two people there, 16 and 32. That's Valerie and Carol. Sorry about that. Thank you very much indeed for playing. Hope you had a good time. Thanks for playing, and we'll lose you from the game. Away they go. Still smiling right to the very end, which is good. Uh, right, so we've got 20 people here who've got uh, blue lights around them. 20 people who gave us the answer 180, but what's more important is who was the fastest. And in third place, Rowan Best. It's the Crocodile Dundee Man. In second place, Vicky Atwell. And in first place, very fast, 1.99 seconds, it's Will Maycock. Well done, Will. Will Maycock. Right then, um, you have an extraordinary habit of falling asleep in clubs, in the toilet. Yeah, on tw two occasions I actually got locked in overnight and uh, the cleaners found me the next morning. <laughs> it's quite a fright. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was. Oh, yes. Well, uh, try and stay awake if at all possible. I'll try my best. Uh, we'll see you uh, have a little bit more in, uh, in round two. If the number of houses in Harry Potter's school, Hogwarts, had magically trebled, how many would there be? Everybody looking forward to uh, the release of this film. It's going to be a monster success. If the number of houses in Harry Potter's school, Hogwarts, had magically trebled, how many would there be? Right. Helps, of course, if you've read the book or you've got kids that have read the books. And if you decided to play that question, we'll light you pink. Oh, gracious. Right. Uh, so that's six people who answered that question. Six people had a go. The answer we wanted was, uh, was 12. Uh, that's four schoolhouses. There's Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Slytherin and Gryffindor. Uh, so three times that, uh, of course, is 12. If you gave us 12, then your light will miraculously go blue. If you didn't, it's going to go red. We have uh, four people out of those uh, six who got it right. Two people we have to lose. We've got to say goodbye to number 19, number 34. Thank you very much indeed for playing, but we do have to lose you from the game. That's a shame, but we do have four people here with blue lights around them, and, uh, and we'll find out now who it is that's actually going to go through to round two and provide you with the, the number you're waiting for, hopefully. In third place, Paul Miller. In second place, Taylor Laurie. First place, 7.4 seconds, it's Ricky McMillan. Right up the top. So, uh, I am... Uh, I, actually, if I'm being honest, Ricky, I've been dreading the fact that you might actually get through because, um, because you have a party trick, don't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can stuff how many Jaffa cakes in your mouth at one time? Whole packet. A whole packet of Jaffa cakes. <laughs> Don't say we don't provide you with an evening of variety on this programme. Uh, right, well, uh, your Jaffa Cakes are waiting uh, as you pass through into round two. What is the total if you add the date of Bastille Day to the traditional date of Bonfire Night? Any ideas? What is the total if you add the date of Bastille Day uh, to the traditional date of Bonfire Night? Right then. Will uh, light you pink if you played that question. Not that many. Uh, five people answered, and uh, the answer we wanted was was 19. Uh, that's the 14th of July, Bastille Day. Uh, 5th of November is Bonfire Night. 14 plus 5 is 19. 19, our answer. If you gave us 19, it's blue. If you didn't, it's red. And you're going home. Oh, no, we lose one person. The one person there we lose is number 33. That's Maureen. Never mind, Maureen. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. I have, thank you, yes. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for playing. And we have to okay. lose you now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye now. There she goes. She's in the dark. Now then, we've got four people here who are right, and they've got blue lights around them. Who is going through in third place? He's been third before. He's still third. Can't get off that, uh, that third place position. It's Paul Miller. In second place, it's Mike Applin. And in first place, at 6.06 .06 seconds, it's Kira McEwen. See, 
39. <laughs> you, uh, were you in South America for yes. was it three months? That's right, yes. When was that? Last year, last summer. What were you doing there? Just travelling around. Really? What did you see? We did the Inca Trail, we saw the rainforest, what was we your saw Lake Titicaca. Favourite thing you saw? Oh, um, Machu Picchu, I suppose. Really? Yes. Fantastic. So if, you, if we could send you anywhere this evening, where would South America's done, where would you like to go? It would have to be Australia. Terrific. Congratulations, Kira. <laughs> Using the numbers after the king's names, add together the Charles who was executed to the Henry who won at Agincourt. Great faces. <laughs> Great faces. Oh, you. Yes, a couple there, not a single clue. But don't worry about that, it's any consolation. I could have done that one anyway. Using the numbers after the king's names, add together the Charles who was executed to the Henry who won at Agincourt. Right then. Uh, uh, did you know the answer to this? Could you have done this? Uh, let's see. Um, we'll light you pink if you played. Right, six people answered that question out of our remaining 37. Six people had a go and hopefully gave us the, uh, the answer. Six, that's what we needed. Charles I was executed. Henry V won at the Battle of Agincourt. One and five is six. If you gave us six, you'll go blue. If you didn't, you'll go red. Four people got it right. Two, but these are very small numbers this week. At this stage of the game, there's still loads of people playing. Uh, we've, uh, we've four people right, two people wrong. So who was it that got it wrong? Number three and number 14. Thank you both very much indeed for playing, Danny and John. We have to lose you from the game. Thanks a lot and bye-bye. And away they go. So four people with blue lights and who's going through? In third place, she'd been second. She's gone down to third now. It's Lorna Gibson. In second place, it's Jim Matthews. And in first place, 10.16 seconds, Bryn Norman. Well done. You, uh, I'm not surprised that you, you knew that, actually, because you have a bit of a passion for, for pub quizzes and things, don't you? Yeah, I used to, yeah. Yeah, you are a, a mine of information. Are you constant facts and figures that you can conjure up? No, I like to do crosswords and things like that, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's got you a long way this evening. You've done very well. It's got you into round two, if that's all right. Yeah. Good? Great. Yeah, Excellent. Thanks. All right, well done. We'll talk to you uh, more as you, uh, as you get into round two. If the darts champion had to score a bullseye with each of his last three darts, how many points did he need to win? Oh, they're tapping away already. I know there is someone amongst our 49ers who does play darts. At least one, for sure. If the darts champion had to score a bullseye with uh, each of his last three darts, how many points did he need to win? That's it. Your time is up. Let's light your pink if you played. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Right, we've 30 people who had a go at that question. 30 potential dart players or just people who follow it or can add up their 50s. Because the answer we wanted was 150. A bullseye is 50. 50 times 3, that's 150. If you gave us 150, you'll go blue and have a chance of going through to round two. If not, at this very last and late stage of the game, it'll be a red light, you're going home. 24 people got that right. Uh, six people got it wrong. If your light just went red, then at this very late stage you did very well, but I'm afraid you've fallen at the last hurdle and I'm afraid you've, you've got to go. And there they go. In the dark. Right, lots of blue lights. Uh, 24 blue lights. 150 was what we wanted. Who gave it to us the fastest? Who's that person going through to round two? And in third place, David Rose! In second place, Martin Platt! It's incredible! In first place, he's been third. He's our crocodile man. He's Rowan Best! <laughs> well done. Thanks, Fantastic. Bro. We've six people. We're going to get to know a little bit more. One of them will play the Wonderwall, but 43 of you, I have to say, thank you very much indeed for playing, and uh, it's been a pleasure. You've been very smiley, and thanks for playing. Winning Lines! <laughs> Looking after number one, it's their second hurdle in their search for a dream holiday. As with every question up until now, the answers they need are numbers, and the numbers they need are right there in front of them, and they are 5, 17, 21, 24, 27, and 39. 
They are the numbers that they brought with them from the first round. I will ask a question. If they can match the right number to the right question, then they are still in with a chance of that holiday. So if you're ready, let's play Looking After Number One. Here we go. Cracker Jack was traditionally transmitted on Fridays at how many minutes to five? And that's Bryn. Five. Five. It's Friday. It's five to five, and it's Cracker Jack. Well done. You've just knocked out Ricky. Ricky, you are in the dark. How many UK number one hit singles did Elvis Presley achieve? Oh, no. Someone's got to go. Who's it going to be? It is number 17. It's Rowan, unfortunately. 17 is the answer. Rowan, you are in the dark. Next question. At what age is a person legally allowed to become an MP in the UK? That's Kira. 21. 21. Ooh, we're right at the last minute there. Yes, you're right. Well done to you. You've just knocked out Brim. Brim, you are in the dark. How many books are there in the New Testament of the Bible? Oh, no! Someone's got to go. Who's it going to be? The answer is 27, Will. 27, it's your number. Will Mankoff is in the dark, and away he goes. Right. We have our two ladies left playing. From the original 49, we are down to just two. They both won something, but only one of them can really win big. That can only be decided when we find out who makes it through to play the Wonder Wall this evening. You are both head to head. Now, Gail and Kira, the answer to this question will either be 24 or 39. The best of luck. And here we go. How old was Jacqueline Bouvier when she married Senator John Kennedy in 1952? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Good gracious, what a way to get knocked out by not an answer. Who is it going to be? Was she 24? Was she 39? She was 24, Gail. She was 24. Kira McEwen plays the Wonder Wall. Well done. Thank you. Very good. You feel all right? I feel a bit of a cheat, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Sometimes it can happen like that. It's incredible the way, the way this game works. Uh, we'll talk to you uh, uh, when you get over to the Wonderwall in just a few moments. In the meantime, Gail, obviously our commiserations to you. Uh, you played beautifully, but not, not quite there. Right at the very end, pipped to the post. You won't go away empty-handed. You've won this. <laughs> Kira can win herself that dream holiday. Just think she could soon be on the other side of the world admiring exotic fish and then sticking them on the barbecue. <laughs> so you watch this at home, don't you? You play quite a lot at home. I watch quiz shows yeah. a lot at home. Yeah. Are you the sort of person that shouts, shouts at the telly? Yes. <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> now you've found yourself here, suddenly on it and playing the game. Uh, does it feel completely different? Completely different kettle of fish, yeah. Uh, as a barrister, of course, I mean, you're going to have to be very calm and very collected. I think you'll find this easy. <laughs> I don't think you'll have a problem at all. Behind Kira is the Wonder Wall, and it's called the Wonder Wall because it contains all the answers she needs, each with its own number. I will ask the question. Kira has to give me the answer and the relevant number. She's got three minutes. I need uh, 20 right for that trip around the world. Two 15-second pit stops. You watch this at home, so you know how this works. You, you basically you can use that twice. Press the button. It'll freeze everything if you get lost. So two 15-second breaks, basically. Um, if you're ready, we can't put it off any longer. Yeah. Now, don't shout at the screen. It's time now to think <laughs> very clearly and calmly. If you're ready, let's play Wonder Wall. Reveal the answers, please. There we are, Kira. That is your passport, basically, to three weeks around the world, or all sorts of incredible holidays leading up to that. Try to remember as much as you possibly can where everything is. That's all that stands between you and an incredible holiday. If you're ready, we'll play What is a Bill of Fare in a restaurant from which diners select their meal? Forty-one menu. Correct. In church, what is the name for the bowl containing holy water that's used for christenings? Fourteen font. Correct. 
Which seeds grow inside the pod of a scarlet runner? Forty-seven lentils. Four kidney beans. Who fought against the Trojans in the Trojan War? Thirty-six Persians. Forty-four Greeks. Which lake, fed and drained by the River Rhone, is the largest in the Alps? Thirty-seven Lucerne. Twenty-seven Geneva. According to the saying that refers to craziness, bats are in the what? Say anything. 22 belfries. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, what are used to make the Middle Eastern dip hummus? 46 chickpeas. Correct. What goes after Royal Leamington for the official name of a health resort in the West Midlands? 49 spa. Correct. What was the surname of John, the author of Room at the Top? Nine brain. Correct. Which Swiss town hosts the Golden Rose Television Festival every year? Pit stop taken with one minute and ten seconds to go. If you can't find it straight away, say anything. We'll move on to the next question. Which Swiss town hosts the Golden Rose Television Festival every year? And we're playing. 37 Lucerne. 18 Montreux. What is the source of a stream produced by a natural outflow of groundwater? Say anything. 20 lock. 35 spring. Which large musical instrument has pipes, stops, pedals and keyboards? Pit stop taken. 44 seconds to go. Which large musical instrument has pipes, stops, pedals and keyboards? Nice and calm. And we're playing. 48 Oregon. Correct. The Duke of Wellington gave his name to which type of footwear? Correct. Which annual autumn display attracts tourists to Blackpool? Forty-eight Moonglow. Thirty Illuminations. Complete the phrase that means all serving soldiers except officers. Rank and what? Twenty-four file. Correct. Which king reigned in 1605 when Guy Fawkes tried to blow up Parliament? 26, James first. Correct. What is the Scottish word for late? Oh, oh, time's up. <laughs> time's up. You said that uh, <laughs> half, <laughs> less than half a second too late. That's <laughs> such a shame. Right, nice and calm. You are going somewhere lovely, and this is where. And you'll be absolutely chocked full of food, apparently. <laughs> Just eat and eat and eat when I you're do. on that. Congratulations. Well, that's all we've got time for tonight.